the grace of Jesus the Christ, the love of God the Creator, and the communion of the queer-making spirit be with you all. I am the Reverend Nicole Garcia, pastor of Westview Church in Boulder, Colorado. I welcome you to this worship service to commemorate pride. The mission statement of Extraordinary Lutheran Ministries is, freed and compelled by the gospel of Jesus Christ to proclaim God's love and seek justice for all, Extraordinary Lutheran Ministries envisions a church where all can serve God according to their callings. These powerful words were lived out through the decades when individuals were extraordinarily ordained. ELM enabled so many of my friends and colleagues to answer their call to ministry. These powerful words are lived out today as we witness the church lifting up more people from the LGBTQ plus community into positions of leadership. Today we give thanks to those who endured the pain of rejection, but refused to leave the church they loved. Today, we give thanks for those who have taken leadership roles in the church. Today, we give thanks for those who will continue to tear down the walls that separate us, so the message of love and inclusion of Jesus Christ can become a reality. Today, our worship, our worship service will include Holy Communion. You are invited to set a place for a paten and chalice near the place where you will participate in the service. If you would like to receive Holy Communion, have bread and wine or grape juice ready. Any type of bread or gluten-free option is fine. Any cup will serve as your chalice for wine or juice. You may also choose only to use bread and it will still be a full experience of the sacrament. If you don't feel comfortable with this way of receiving communion, that is also fine. When the words of institution are uttered, you are invited to raise the bread or cup respectively at the same time I am raising the bread or cup. In this way, we are church together. Let us begin. Creative one, you were in a very good mood the day you created us, faithful, fabulous, free, and fierce, made in your own image, brave, beautiful, vulnerable, vibrant. We are the people you have called us to be, liberated, longing, loving. Filled with the hope of the rainbow, set free by your gifts of grace, we marvel at your love. We bow to your mercy. We live because of your forgiveness. Join us in these moments and in our lives. We offer once again all of ourselves given to you, who first gave all of yourself for us. Alleluia, alleluia. All praise and honor are yours now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, you called forth life from the waters of chaos. At Stonewall, our siblings met chaos with courage, shouting no, so that we now can receive yes. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and their family. The Berkeley Four faced their own rising waters of fear and rejection, but they held firm in their faith so that you would save them from the maelstrom. At the river, Jacob wrestles with your messenger and receives a blessing and you gave him a new name. In 2009, you gave us a new name, ordained in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Through the sea, you led your people Israel into a new identity as a free people. The extraordinarily ordained, those who came out later in life, those who never thought they would, live to see same-gender marriage. We are now a free people. At the Jordan, your beloved was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By your water and your word, you name us all as your beloved children. All genders, all sexualities, all people now claim themselves as heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, poured out for all people, 
washed clean of the shame and fear of the world, wishes to be put upon us, raised up to new life in Jesus Christ, God's most glorious gift, embodied in each of us through the Holy Spirit. All praise to you, living God, now and forever. Amen. from the Prodigal Church by Joel Workin, based on Luke chapter 15. Usually when we hear St. Luke's story of God's grace in the parable of the prodigal child, we the listeners are cast in the title role. Not a bad part actually, since as stars of the show we get to satisfy all our carnal desire and still have things work out back home in the end. A sort of have your cake and eat it too role. And that great swine scene, I will arise and go to my father. The other alternative, of course, is to be cast in the villain's role and play the big, bad elder sibling who will not cut anyone a break. Not a bad part, either. Anyway, as I say, this is how it usually works out. Usually. In the story of gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, and queer people in the church, however, the customary roles are reversed. The church, God's understudy, which usually retains for itself the role of warm and waiting parent, is now the one that has taken the journey to the far-off country. In this drama, with the church off living its carnal and sinful life, LGBTQ Christians are suddenly thrust into the role of forgiving parent and are left standing, if I may use this rural image, by the mailbox at the end of the driveway, waiting for the prodigal to come home. What does it mean for the church's LGBTQ people to play the part of this often overlooked, 
mostly inactive character of forgiving parent. If prodigality and hospitality have both been taken away, what is left to do? The parable answers back quite simply, wait. It is curious to note that in the parable, the prodigal wises up without anybody's assistance or advice, save the swines, perhaps. Will the church do the same? But we do have the power of waiting, of hoping. We also have the power, as the grieved party, of forgiveness. But whereas one may forgive, it takes two to be reconciled. Childish as the church may seem an act, it is not a child. LGBTQ Christians, therefore, await a church that comes home as an adult, not happily, perhaps, not jumping and skipping, even with some fear and concern, but of its own will and confessing with its lips and heart that I have sinned against you and against God. A church which is dragged home, seduced home, or tricked home does not end the wait. No, we do better by waiting, waiting expectantly, lovingly, and hopefully by the mailbox for a repentant return rather than playing juvenile games about recognition, policy, and the like. It is not easy to hope and to believe in a future reconciliation, especially when a loved one says no and blithely walks away. It is not easy to stand ready to forgive and to welcome home with open arms. Personally, I would rather be the star of the show and squander the family fortune. That sounds like a lot more fun. The parable, however, says hope, believe, wait. There is more to be said. This show is not over yet. Just you wait. Here ends the reading. A reading from Genesis. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant between me and you and every living creature for ages, generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it will be, sign, uh, be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, my bow will appear in the clouds. Then I will remember the covenant that is between me and you and every kind of creature. And never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. Whenever my bow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all living things on earth. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. Psalm 13. How long, Yahweh? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my anguish and wallow in despair all day long? How long will my enemy win over me? Look at me, answer me, Yahweh my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed. Lest my foes rejoice when I fall. I trust in your love. My heart rejoices in the deliverance you bring. I'll sing to you, Yahweh, for being so good to me. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Those who welcome you also welcome me. And those who welcome me welcome the one who sent me. Those who welcome the prophets just because they are prophets will receive the reward reserved for the prophets themselves. Those who welcome holy people just because they are holy will receive the reward of the holy ones. The truth is, whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these lowly ones just for being a disciple will not lack a reward. A few weeks ago, my partner Deb and I put on masks and texted with friends and colleagues and walked to the meetup spot in a nearby school parking lot. College students had organized the Tacoma Black Lives Matter protest in the wake of the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis and Breonna Taylor in Louisville and Manny Ellis right here in our own city. And all the black and brown folks killed at the hands of police, those known and unknown to us. And to call attention to racist healthcare inequity laid bare by COVID-19. 
and violence against trans women of color and the sin of white supremacy coursing through the systems of our city and our nation. Because of the pandemic, organizers passed out masks if folks weren't wearing one and had hand sanitizer at the ready. But what I also noticed was that there were folks specifically tasked with passing out water to those who had gathered. Just a cup of cold water offered to those with tired feet and aching hearts, with an unquenchable thirst for justice and for accountability, a desperate thirst for a breaking open and a toppling down. At first glance, a cup of cold water sounds so quaint, both in the Gospel of Matthew and in the parking lot of a protest. Nothing very radical. Jesus tells those sent out disciples who were told to bring nothing for their journey that when they are welcomed, Jesus is welcomed. God is welcomed. That even a cup of cold water symbolizes this deep welcome because welcoming can be dangerous. Welcome of those sent by Jesus is received as a sign that you are joining in God's work in the world, that you haven't given up on the promises of God. Welcome is an affirmation of God's kingdom over Rome's power. A conspiring with care of neighbor and justice over individualism and getting mine. These are dangerous affirmations. Those who had co-signed with the power of Rome would not have welcomed these disciples. Those who had given up on compassion and a hope that things could be different would not have a cup of cold water to offer one of these lowly ones. Those who welcome you, welcome me, which is also welcoming God, Jesus says. We're all connected. With these words, Jesus is weaving a web of co-conspirators. Weaving a web isn't just a movement strategy, though. It's also a necessary response to deep loss and violence. Hearers of Matthew's Gospel would have experienced the first Jewish revolt against Rome, with some estimating one million Jews killed in Rome's retaliation. The web of losses ripped through these communities and families, leaving deep holes of loss and hope dangling by a thread. Through welcome, such tired and broken threads are woven together into connection, into healing, into power. After the two-mile march weaving through the streets of Tacoma, we reassembled in a local park, and I saw a young person with a Fuel Your Anger sign attached to a plastic bucket filled with granola bars and fruit snacks and clementines, and they were wandering through the crowd, passing those out. At first, I thought that was a bit over the top. I mean, most of us could have been fine for a couple hours without a snack. But then I realized, oh, they get it. They know this is long haul work and we need fuel to sustain us, fuel to sustain our anger and our commitment and our hope. What we've been up to friends, this is long haul work. Communities of St. Francis and First United Jeff and Ruth and Phyllis, if we were in the same room, I imagine you might offer a knowing sigh or an amen to that. Here we are 30 years after those extraordinary ordinations and congregations, here in this moment of celebration and pride. 30 years of ELM and its predecessors. Much has been accomplished in and outside the church during that time. Queer Lutheran ministers can be called to serve. Countless courageous congregations are in ministry with queer leaders. Vision and expectations was finally removed. Proclaimed membership approaches 400. Federal gay marriage, and just this month, the Supreme Court declaring that employers can't discriminate against LGBTQ folks in the workplace. And also, during this time, the draft replacement to vision and expectations was as insulting as the process. Our president is trying to roll back transgender health care. The list of black and brown people killed at the hands of police exceeds our capacity to know all their names. 
No wonder folks are tired. Psalm 13 that we heard today is an endurance psalm for long haul work. How long, Yahweh? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my anguish and wallow in despair all day long? The psalm makes space for lament, a place to cry out and plead, and then to go back at it again. A couple weeks ago, I saw a Facebook post from Larry Christensen, who many of you know and who's been part of this movement in ELM. He wrote, 10 years ago today, my son, Eric Christensen, was approved for reception onto the ELCA's roster of ordained ministers by the candidacy committee of the Southeastern Iowa Synod. This was the same group who denied him ordination in 2003. Linda and I were twice arrested for demonstrating for a change in the policies that excluded our son. I don't think long-term sustained demonstration is wrong or ineffective. Tell me, what else is more effective? As I recall, it was Eric's parents who first found the Extraordinary Candidacy Project, now ELM, and told Eric about it. And I found ELM in seminary attending my first retreat with queer ministers and seminarians at St. Dorothy's Rest in Northern California. I was welcomed and given a thirst-quenching cup of I see you. You belong here. We got you. ELM is a community where I first felt welcomed as a queer person and as a person of faith with all the parts of me. And ELM has traveled with me in all the stages of my vocation, Seminary student who had passion without always having perspective. Frustrated and hurt candidate compelled to offer Gay 101 during another candidacy committee interview instead of answering questions about ministry or call. As a new pastor, finding my voice and sometimes feeling the temptation to tone it down and just be grateful for any congregation who would welcome me, but also experiencing that my queerness was a gift that our church needed. As an outreach pastor working with street-based queer, black, and brown youth and others who had never set foot in a church building, but who were church to each other. As program director of Extraordinary Lutheran Ministries offering advocacy and support for congregations and leaders living into our faithful and fabulous callings. And now, as a mid-career pastor serving at Pacific Lutheran University with college students including queer students who are often the first ones out there faithfully offering a cup of cold water at protests or advocating for our undocumented students or calling in our administration to commit to anti-racism work. My ministry has been deeply interwoven with ELM, a web that has inspired and challenged and supported me. When you factor in almost 400 Proclaim members, Congregations all across the U.S. and Canada working with queer leaders, ELM board members over the last 30 years, generous donors, that's a big and complicated, extensive and beautiful queer web. We even have a Proclaim member on Queer Eye this season. The day that the show was released, I watched that episode with Pastor Noah with delight and empathy and hope. And when Pastor Megan presented Noah with the red stole, I gasped. That was the same stole that I wore at my ordination, my extraordinary ordination, 13 years ago. A stole that even then had already been well-traveled, resting on the shoulders of Anita, Sharon, Jay, Eric, Megan, Dawn. A stole that carried the weight of the web now continue to weave the threads of solidarity and connection and community and joy. This community has been sustained through our web of connections, yes, and also through our revolutionary joy. You all are some of the most joyful people I know and hilarious, from magic wands at extraordinary ordinations to blogs about fictitious bishop, no effing way, to proclaim gatherings with deep belly laughter, to catchy t-shirt slogans and celebratory events 
throughout these 30 years. We know joy, the deep joy of a God who welcomes all, who welcomes us in fullness and in wholeness, a God who chose to be interwoven with us in a big, beautiful, complicated, and beautifully queer web. For queer folks, I know we often think about welcome in the sense of, will I be welcomed, which puts us in the position of the disciples in this passage. Yes, and also, sometimes we are the ones in the position of welcoming. Will we welcome the ones sent to challenge our structures of white supremacy? Will we welcome the ones sent to bring good news from life experiences and lenses that are new to us? Will we welcome as a way to say yes? I believe welcoming you is welcoming Jesus, is welcoming God. Not a superficial welcome, we all know what that feels like, but the deep welcome that is the affirmation of, I'm willing to get tangled up with you. I long to be connected with Jesus and so need to be tangled up with you for our shared liberation. Yes, friends, this is long haul work. These movements for queer justice and Black Lives Matter, climate justice, indigenous rights, gender justice, immigration reform, long haul work. In the words of the prophet Debbie Novotny from the TV series Queer as Folk, a word of advice, my sweet Emmett, mourn the losses because they are many, but celebrate the victories because they are few. We pause today to celebrate, to pray this queer joy will fuel us for the work of justice that still needs to be done. So grab a granola bar, take a sip of cold water, and don't forget to pause long enough to remember it is not just about our own endurance, but about the enduring love of a God who welcomes us and fuels us weaving the queer web that tangles us up in God's hope and grace and joy. Amen. You with the sad eyes Don't be discouraged, oh You can be amazing, you can turn a phrase into a weapon or a drug. You could be the outcast or be the backlash of somebody's lack of love. But I wonder what could happen. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid.
I believe in God, the creator, who designed all good things, including people of all gender identities and sexual orientations. I believe in Jesus Christ, Sophia, the word, who came to earth to live among us, who was born into a non-conventional family that adored Jesus, even when they didn't totally get it, who confounded authorities and comforted the oppressed. Jesus was so hated by the empire that they took the earthly body of God, crucified it, mocked it, killed it, and threw it into a grave as one of so many marginalized people. Jesus knew personal hell. On the third day, God celebrated the wonder of the human body and the power of resurrection over death and oppression. Women were the first to declare Christ risen. Jesus ascended into the realm of beauty and they continue to move among us, blessing and sustaining us. I believe in the Holy Spirit, all music, wonder, and strength. I am a member of the body of Christ. I cherish the communion of saints, live because of the forgiveness of sin, emulate the resurrection of the body, and already experience life everlasting. Amen. In the midst of chaos and calm and all that keeps our spirits wild, overwhelmed or troubled, we pause. We pause to remember each other as those whose precious and precarious lives are inherently bound together. We pause to remember the gifts of water, of trees, of beauty, of the land each of us inhabits. We pause to remember our neighbors, distant and near. And so to the one who is love, we bring the prayers of our communities. Where we share in joy or concern, let us respond together Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers. Let us pray. We pray for our elders whose labor of love we show reverence to. We pray for the people of St. Francis and First United, the first congregations that called our LGBTQIA plus siblings as their pastors 30 years ago. For the congregations that followed courageously and faithfully in their footsteps. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers for the ones who never tasted the freedom they fought for, for the ones who were forced to the fringes of their own movements, for the allies who suffered beside us, casting their lot with us in true solidarity, for the ones forgotten and betrayed. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers. For the ones who are struggling with feelings of isolation and shame, for those who have no safe place or people to retreat to, for those who are unsafe in their homes and communities during this pandemic we find ourselves in. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers. For the black and brown bodies who have been murdered by the state, for our black, brown, and indigenous trans siblings, for the ones who speak truth to power, for the protesters who will not cease until justice is served, for the ones who took risks and who dreamed. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers. For all, who, for all those who hunger for justice and liberation today, for all who are suffering in our world and in our church at the hands of white supremacy, for those imprisoned by the state, for those whose land has been taken, for the land we occupy that does not belong to us, for the earth that groans beneath us, for those without food or shelter, for those who have yet to repent. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayer. We pray in gratitude for all that nourishes and sustains us, for the gifts of beauty and friendship, shared meals and art and love, for laughter, for pleasure, for the friends and lovers and comrades who lift our spirits, always by our side when the days are heavy for the freedom we have in Christ and in the freedom we experience when we proclaim God's love. Beloved, as the world turns, hear our prayers. For your presence within and around us in our highs and our lows and everywhere in between, 
In our hope and our despair, Creator, we give you thanks. Hear our prayers and deepen our willingness to show up with and for one another, sharing in each other's burdens and working for one another's protection and care. Amen. God is with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, life-giving God. We thank you, divine seamstress, for you never stop creating from the dawn of time, in our mother's womb, and even in the age to come, your creativity is as endless as eternity. Even today, you are knitting us, your people, into a garment of many colors. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for you do not allow us to grow complacent. You store up dreams and visions within us, making us restless for a new heaven and a new earth, you clothe us with power to bring these dreams to life. In you, we are beginning to see all things anew. We thank you, Christ our Savior, for your wondrous transformation, word made into flesh. You challenge us with foreign experiences, teaching us that those we thought were strange and cut off are members of your holy body. 
therefore, with Joseph and all of Israel's children, with the confused disciples and the Ethiopian eunuch, with all those who have shown us your way, all those who have gone before us, all those we gather with this day, we praise your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus is made known to us in the breaking of bread and in the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. We remember how on the night before he was crucified, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is the bread of life. Each time you eat it together, remember me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is God's love poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Each, whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember that night Jesus spent with his friends, and we feel their presence with us now, brought into our midst by faith and love, opening our eyes to a new reality. We ask God through the Holy Spirit to bless these gifts we offer and share, making them Christ's body and blood and Christ's holy people. Together with all the church, we give you thanks, Creator, Redeemer, Spirit of love, Bind us together, open our hearts, grant us peace. Amen. Using the language of your own heart, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our parents who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your reign come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the reign, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, and your souls will be fed. Come at the Holy One's invitation, and eat the bread of salvation. Drink of Jesus' love poured out for you. Before we share communion, let us pray together. God, in this time of physical separation from our church family, we give you thanks as we partake in your gift of grace, Holy Communion. As we receive this meal, remind us of your forgiveness and promise of eternal life. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. I invite you now to commune each other and commune yourself. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Queer making spirit, you make darkness, light, and twilight, and call them good. Sea and dry land and everything in between, genders, trans, cis, and all that is beyond and outside. Yet this world, this life, and this feast are but a foretaste of your celestial realm. Nourish our hearts and bodies so that the love we have fought for Fuel us to keep fighting until the kingdom of God is come. We ask this in the name of the one, holy and undivided Trinity. (laughs) 
Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Cause your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Cause your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people. Divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Cause your people are my people. Your people are my Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Cause your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people, your divine, my divine.